Hello, everyone. Well, we're all aware of what was reported with Sechi. Uh, subsequently, a number of people came out and pretty well debunked it. And, well, quite frankly, I was quite taken aback the first time uh, I saw it. And after re-examining it, um, the pictures, I would have to agree, but, and I have to say, but, and you'll see why. Number one, I do agree this is a, well, I, you know, you can call it a reflection, refraction from uh, the lens. I still don't know how this camera did that. I've heard the exp explanations. And I'll take it on the surface that, okay, granted, this is for some reason um, either been superimposed. They said it was a software problem, processing problem. You know, that's my been in it for decades. So anyway, I, I you know, listen, you, you, there, you can argue either side of the equation, but I do agree this is, in fact, the sun. However, there is something more going on here. And I'm going to show you before we get into our physicist's thoughts on this. Ladies and gentlemen, there was something else going on in this event. Now, I know objects in space move very fast, much more faster than what most common people understand. And when I say common people, what I mean by that, the average person, they don't understand that objects, celestial objects, can move millions of miles an hour. Not that far-fetched. And I contend that is not the sun, and I'll show you why. We began to look at this in different light spectrums. We can see the sun here. You can see the corona, all of that. And it's an amazing question that needs to be delved into a little bit more, how a software um, image uh, refraction on the satellite could do this. They talk about circuitry overload. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Overload, excuse me. But ladies and gentlemen, this is something else other than the sun. And I will take you through here and show you that it shows up in every visible light spectrum. It's probably the most compelling shot right there. This is not Venus. I grant you this is not the sun. But ladies and gentlemen, whatever this is, it's big. It's very big. And I happen to think that this is one of the best frames that you can see it at. I say that is not the sun. This is the sun. I will grant it that, but this is not. I think, and it's just my theory, and I happen to have others that are now getting on board with this theory, that what this was was a safety ride protocol that when this object became in view, there was a safety protocol within the software, within the system, that put in this aberration. Now, I know it sounds far-fetched, but listen, you need, when you're investigating a crime, you look at everything. I'm telling you, that is a brown dwarf star. There you go, folks. I have blown it up for you. See it for yourself. And you can come to your own conclusions. But I'm telling you, that is not a camera software malfunction. There it is. It's there. It's real. And now, let's hear the physicist's thought on this. This is our physicist's thoughts on the brown dwarf. And as she goes through this, as you can see, and I'm going to go very slowly so you can read this for yourself. 
the admission is, yes, this was a glitch in the system, whatever it was, yes. But what we're saying, this is not. Figure 1, the image is provided by Sechi of a strange object as it first appeared on November 16, 2016. It appears at different times for the different stereo A detectors. Figure 2 shows an image of the sun provided by Sechi via the EUVA-A 171A detector at 2.14 UTC on October 17, 2016. And here we got the image, right? Goes on to write figure three, shows on the left the same figure as figure two, reflected vertically and then rotated by 90 degrees to the right. On the right of the figure two is the stereo A, H11, excuse me, HI1, image showing the large object that first started appearing on November 16, 2016. The two images have the closest possible time stamp. Images from exactly the same time were not available. Notice that both images have the same outline. The peaks in the sun's corona in the image on the left are clearly seen in the same relative positions in the image on the right, indicated by red and yellow arrows. Jets in the corona also appear in the same relative positions indicated by the green arrows. My conclusion is that an image of the sun was superimposed on stereo A images that do not usually show the sun. It is possible that stereo A's detector were designed to provide these images separately, but, they, but that they are not usually shown to the public. The fact that an error occurred and these images were blended with the images that the public gets to see is therefore a wonderful opportunity to further study what is going on with our sun. And here you can see. Okay. Hmm. Let's continue. Figure three on the left of the same image of the sun provided by Sechi from November 17, 2016 from 214 UTC reflected vertically and rotated to the right by 90 degrees. On the right, the HI1 ASREM image of the strange object also from November 17, 2016 at 249 UTC. Comparison of the two images reveals that the strange object is the sun. Figure 4 shows three HI1 a visible light images of the object we know is the sun from November 16, 2016 at 1929, 2009, and 2049 UTC. In the 2049 image on the right, we see a large spherical object in front of the sun. This object is not completely dark. It emits some light, much less than the sun, but still some light, and cannot therefore be a planet. It is a small and dim star, and therefore likely, very likely to be the brown dwarf star. This object is obviously very fast moving, as it is not clearly discernible in the preceding images. However, we can see darkness on the surface of the sun on the left-hand side. This may be due to the brown dwarf having a discharging effect on the sun's surface as it passes. This also suggests that the object is moving from left to right in this image. And here you go. And that is my point to this. I saw this yesterday. And I said, okay, listen, I got it wrong. I'll admit it. <laughs> Folks, um, I don't have a problem ever admitting that I'm wrong. I mean, listen, that's how you learn. But I also knew that something was here. It didn't make sense. Anyway, the HI1... A, visible light images as provided by Sechi. All images show dark areas on the sun's surface where it may have been discharged by the object, likely to be a brown dwarf star, appearing in the right image in front and just off center right. There we go. To find the actual trajectory of the object, we can rotate the image where, uh, where object, likely to be the brown dwarf star, appears 
image on the right hand side of figure four, right, right here, so that it coincides with the sun's correct orientation as we use uh, as we are used to. This is shown in figure five below, which indicates that the object is moving upwards from below the sun and along the sun's center line. Here it is. On the left, again, is the image of the sun in its correct orientation. On the right is the H1, uh, HI1, a visible light image showing the sun and what is likely to be the brown dwarf star in front of the sun with the sun in the same orientation as in the image on the left, indicating that the object of interest is moving upwards along the center line from below the sun. Okay, do with it what you want, but I believe that all people have to be open-minded and fair-minded. And it wouldn't be the first time that there has been a statement made that later had to be retracted. None of us are perfect and none of us are experts in these areas. I am thankful to our physicists, thank you. Thank you for taking the time and giving another perspective of which I happen to believe. I do. So I'll close it out here. Again, everyone has an opinion, but I am telling you, I believe we have clear evidence that the brown dwarf is in our solar system. Now, time will tell if we see this again. If we see this anomaly happening again, well, then we know that it's a little bit more than just how shall we say, uh, um, an OME problem. You know, something's wrong with the software. Get it. We shall see. All right. Be kind to one another.